One of the most basic skills in working with Adobe Illustrator is your ability to create shapes. So in this tutorial video, we're going to go over some of the basic shapes and line tools, as well as the keyboard shortcuts that you can use to help you make correct or build correct shapes. So let's go ahead and start by pulling off these shape and line tools. So again, when you hold down on one of the tools, if it has tools underneath it, it'll bring up a little short list here. And you can click this tear off tab, and that's going to allow me to have mini toolbars up here. So I also want to go to the line tool and tear that off and have that available for me to work on in a second. So let's first talk about how you draw a shape. And we're going to use the ellipse tool for this. Now you can freeform draw, which means I can make whatever kind of shape I want and fit it however I want to do it. So there's my freeform draw option, or you can click and it'll bring up options that asks you what's the width and height of the circle you want. So if I change this to 200 and change this to 200 and click OK, it's going to make a perfect circle. So I can grab my selection tool and then move it and there we go. All right, so there are easier ways to draw this and you can actually in the middle of freeform drawing you can make sure that you have a perfect circle or perfect square or perfect star whatever you need to do and that's by using those keyboard shortcuts so everything that I'm going to show you with the rectangle tool just know that it'll apply when you're using the ellipse tool so I'll grab the rectangle tool and again I can start drawing and I can do a freeform so this is obviously a very long rectangle or I could try to get a perfect square and if you look as I'm moving in the bottom right hand corner next to my mouse it's showing you the width and height so if you're trying to eyeball this and get a perfect square sometimes it's a little bit tricky and it's harder than it actually needs to be so what you can do as you're drawing and you can see that I have just blue outlines right now that means I'm still in drawing mode which essentially means I'm just holding my mouse down so right now I'm still holding that mouse button and even with a skewed rectangle, if I hold the shift key, it's going to make it a perfect square. So if I move in while holding shift and my mouse down, now it's going to maintain the proportions and move the width and the height perfectly square. So I can create my perfect square right there, and there we go. Now when it comes to the rounded rectangle tool, you can do the same thing. You can click and drag, and you can hold shift to make a perfect square and a couple other tools that I want to point out to you or a couple other keyboard shortcuts. If I hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, it's actually going to spread out from the center instead of the top left hand corner. So if I let go of Alt, see how the top left hand corner doesn't move? But now if I hold Alt or Option, it's going to give me that ability to spread from the center. But it's kind of overlapping the square above it and I might not want that. so. I don't want to have to let go and then come down here and draw another one, delete this one and draw another one. What I can do as I'm drawing, so let's say I'm drawing this out and I actually want it to be underneath the rectangle, I can hold the spacebar key. Again, notice I haven't let go of my left mouse key. I can use the spacebar to kind of move that shape where I want it to be. So I can let go of spacebar and then I can start resizing and making that again. So when I've got it the way I want it, I can let go. But I may or may not like the actual rounded corner. It might be not rounded enough. It might be too, too hard or I want it to be softer or whatnot. So let's go ahead and try that again. All right, so let me say draw this rounded rectangle out. And now as I hit the up arrow key, you can see that the corners become much more rounded. And so that gives me a much more rounded rectangle. If I draw one again and hit the down arrow key, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to make it much more angular and corner. So if you don't want such a rounded rectangle, you can definitely do that. All right, so same rules apply if we're doing, let's say, a polygon. If you hold shift, the difference with the polygon is that it's going to maintain a parallel line with the bottom edge of your artboard. So I can hold this space bar kind of get it where I want it to be. Now with this polygon tool, again I was holding shift but I just let go. With this polygon tool, if you hit up on the keyboard with the arrow keys, 
you're going to add more sides to your polygon. And again, if you hit down, you can create something like this or just a regular triangle. Okay, so after you work with the polygon, we're going to move on to the star. And it's going to create a crazy star because the last time I was an illustrator, I created this crazy star. So how did I get this? Because when you open Illustrator, it's going to come out as a perfect five point star. Well, first of all, if I use my modifier keys, again, the upper or down arrow keys, I can add less spikes so I can get to the point where it has five spikes again, but it's a little bit too pointy. And I did that by holding the opt -in, oops, I mean the command key on a Mac, and I think that's control on a PC. You're going to have to play with that. So as you can see, as I hold that key down, it's going to become more spiky or less spiky as I move my mouse in or out. So I can kind of get it where I want it to go. Again, shift is going to maintain with the bottom of the screen. So let's try that, and that's a perfect star. So again, if I go to draw another star, I can hit the up arrow key to add a lot of spikes, and I can hold command to make it super spiky or less spiky, and there we go. So that's how I can create custom stars. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the line tool. Now we could talk about the flare tool. All that does is create a flare. It's a lens flare, so you can play around that with that. I hardly ever use it in Illustrator, but you never know, there might come a time where you wanna use it. So in terms of the line tool, I don't usually use the rectangular grid tool or the polar grid tool, but we'll talk about them anyway. So for the line segment, I just click and draw, and again, I can hold shift, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to move it in 45 or 40 degree angles. I can't remember which one, but it's trying to help you to create straight lines. So in and out, I can definitely draw a line. All right, so with that line, another keyboard shortcut, and I don't know when you'd use this, but it's kind of cool to use it. Let me change the stroke to one and try to draw a new line. And as I draw, if I hold the tilde key, which is the key just to the left of the one key, it's gonna add a bunch of lines so you can do some cool artwork. And there we go. So now I can mess with those, color those, whatnot. I'm just gonna delete them. All right, so for the arc tool, it's a little bit different. It allows you to create rounded edges. So if you hold the up arrow key, it's gonna create a bend one way and it's gonna get more dramatic, and as I hold the down key, it's gonna bend the other way, and the more you go, the more dramatic that curve is gonna be. And if I hold the shift key, it's gonna to try to maintain, maintain proportions, and then the alt key, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what the alt key does, but it does something. So, oh, it looks like it's making one side shorten while this side's not. So, anyway, it's just playing around. That's the best way to kind of learn these tools, so let's go back to five point stroke weight so you can see what happened with that. All right, for the spiral tool, again, mine is different because I've been playing with these tools. So if you hit up or down, see how it keeps adding more spirals? So if I hold the up key, you're gonna create a ton of spirals in this document. So I can go all the way down and there we go. So that's creating a pretty cool spiral. When you're first doing the spiral though, as you draw, and I better take all those out. Let's see, one of these keyboard shortcuts, I can't remember, oh, Alt Option, will make it tighter or a looser spiral. So as I'm holding the Command key or Control key on a PC, it's making a much looser spiral. So I can do that kind of a spiral and it, it obviously it has a bigger gap between each of the lines than what you see here. So same thing with the rectangular grid tool. If you ever need it, you can hit the up key to add more rows and the left or right key to add more columns. And you can use the space bar to move it around and the shift key to maintain proportions and there you can make a grid. And the same thing if you were gonna do a polar grid tool. So let me delete that one so I have space to work. If I do up or down, it's gonna add more circles. Down, it's gonna delete circles. Hold shift, it's gonna maintain. And 
Alt, it's going to spread from the center. So let's Alt and Shift there. And Command, looks like Command or Control doesn't do anything. So there's my Polar Grid. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, Polar Grid Tool. So basically with this, we're just playing. And that's what I recommend you do with the Shape Tool. Just open up a new Illustrator document with artboards and you're not going to care about it. It's not going to upset you if you mess it up. You can just delete it and start fresh. And click on each one of these tools and start drawing them out and see what happens if you hold the shift key down, if you hold the alt or option key down, if you hold the command or control key down. It's not going to hurt it just to play in this document. And that should get you ready to create actual projects where you're using these shapes such as creating a pattern.